Well, I just gave Matt a new handle. Who's Matt, you ask? I honestly have no idea. Well, it turns out that it's somewhat of an art to replace an axe handle like this. And I was very meticulous. It would have made Wrangler Star proud, who has an excellent video on this topic. But my method was quite a bit different from his. I used a chisel. And I try to not use a chisel on videos because of the vicious criticism that you get. People will not approve of the way that you use a chisel no matter how you're using it so I just avoid using the damn thing altogether but I think I did a pretty good job and now it could just use an edge so what are we looking at here this is my refractory cement fire pit I made this about probably at least 10 years ago and it's held up rather nicely, but since it's so aged, I don't want to hear any comments about its design flaws. I know from an engineering perspective that there are fundamental flaws in its geometry, and such is life. That's what happens. You live and learn and gain experience from the things that you make. Lesson learned. I'll show you what is wrong with it from a design perspective. The premise was simple enough. I just wanted a fire pit that was made out of 12 blocks. And I knew for the most part that I would probably keep it in the double ring configuration, but I wanted to be able to reposition them like this. And the idea behind it was so that you could have a multi-layered grill. I never did come up with a good grill for it, but Nevertheless, it still is nice to be able to put it into this configuration because, especially if people are just standing on one side, it projects the heat in that direction from against the back wall. Well, I don't want to sound like the pretentious artist, but its design was modeled a bit after the Colosseum. That was the look that I was going for. Each piece is... 44 pounds, it's cast from refractory cement, and I designed the part and made the mold and cast it, fired it to, I can't remember for certain because it's been a long time, but I think it was cast or fired to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit over oh, 8, 10 hours in the furnace. And what this material was used for was molten metal would run through a trough to get it from one point to another. And this was the physical, this is the material that, that comprised the physical surface that would come into direct contact with the molten metal. So as you could probably imagine, it can withstand some pretty vicious extremes. This has been sitting out in the freezing Pennsylvania winters enduring rain and sleet and snow and ice and I, I've had fires <laughs> while there's snow on it and they're soaking wet. Uh, it's, it bakes in the sun and sits overnight and I've broken two pieces now and I'll show you how. Unquestionably the biggest design flaw was that I put a single airport in the center. I should have probably put two. It would have doubled the amount of air volume that could get to the fire to help it the combustion breathe. Also, it's a design flaw. It wants to split in half. I broke two parts. I'll show you the broken ones. One I broke by dropping it on the ground from waist height, and just like that, and that was a foolish thing to do. The other one I broke in a fit of rage. <laughs> because I was burning things and I don't remember what had angered me but I threw an old speaker box at it and it broke it. <laughs> Lesson learned. This is why age teaches us patience. <laughs> now the other thing that I consider a design flaw 
relates to the diameter of the circle, or the circumference rather. The form was constructed assuming that each of the blocks would be up against each other tightly. But I found that the fires just burn a lot more effectively when there's a gap. So I probably should have altered the, the shape of the part accordingly. I generate a pretty considerable amount of, well, waste wood, so I'm burning quite frequently. I used to dig this stuff up, put it in garbage bags, and then just throw it away. And I found over the years that that's just way too much work. There's a much simpler approach, or solution rather. That's, well, fairly obvious. I used a magnet to look for metallic things that don't belong. And then the rest of it, some of it, I mix into compost. And I'll show you what I do with the rest. 